Bright sunny day, but I got a solar issue. Let's talk about it. Thanks for tuning in. Jeff Ferris on the Hot Homestead on a bright sunny wintry day because I got snow on the ground. I don't know, can you see some of the snow down there? Anyhow, so I got battery issues. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about what my issue is, what I'm going to do as a temporary fix, and then I got more information coming on the solar and why I have those issues. I knew I was going to have it, but I just didn't do the right thing. Let's take a look. All right, so here's what I've got. I've got eight roll serrets. Ones are what, 605s, I think they're six volt, um, 460 amps each. I bought these like 10 years ago. I've noticed recently that those four have been using a lot of water. These four have not. My batteries, the storage isn't lasting as long, so their charge is not lasting as long as it, it should. So they're not holding their charge basically. So I'm thinking, all right, well, why? Well, here's why. I've only got 1,500 watts of solar, and this system here, 24 volts and 900 amps, is like 11,000, no, it's 20,000 watts. So because solar, you can only use like up to 50% of the battery, that's only 11,000 watts I could use. My panels are only 1,500. So as you can imagine, it's going to take a long time to go from 50% up to fully charged. So during the winter, when I have two weeks of nothing but snow clouds, I'm not getting enough solar to charge these, and they're gradually depleting. Well, I never really, I knew it was going to happen, and I was going to add more solar panels. I've got that cheap charge controller that for the money for 10 years has been fabulous but I was going to upgrade that so I could take on more panels because 1500 panels is all that could handle 1500 watts so I was going to upgrade this upgrade the panels and then that way I'd have more watts to put in my batteries and I'd be better off well I never did that it doesn't matter why it just never happened you gotta have more solar panels than you need. Basically, I think you wanna charge your batteries when you have full sun, like in an hour or two from, regardless of if it's lithium or AGMs, doesn't matter. You wanna go from basically dead, you know, 50% for these, what, 95 for lithiums, all the way to full in like just a couple of hours. That's how much solar I think you need so that when you have two weeks of snow and clouds and you're not getting solar, these will last at least a few days. All that solar panels will at least get a little bit, even if it's 1% or something, you'll get at least something. This is kind of a lesson learned by experience that I knew was going to happen, but I just didn't do anything about it. So here's what I, how I determined that those were my four literally dead batteries. But these four here, are, I think, are still good. Here's why. Not only because when I go to fill water, because you have to maintain these with distilled water, I could go a month, and these four, just a little bit of water, if any. But those, a lot of water. Sometimes like a gallon each. Not like each cell, but each battery. And I'm like, crap, that's a lot of water. Broke out this guy here. And what I would do is I took this guy and I put him down to 200 amps. Whoa, how the control. To the 200 amps. Now, it's not going to read anything now, I don't think, because I've already done this. But then I took this and I went through each one of these. Now, it's not reading anything because there's no load. You have to have a load. So basically... I've already turned this off, I've already turned that off, and I've even disconnected my some of my batteries, my inverters disconnected, everything. But before I did that, 
I had my inverter running, I had a load, I put it on this positive here, it gave me a reading. I put it on this one, it gave me a reading. This one gave me a reading. That one gave me a reading. Then I went to these three here. Those three gave me nothing. Literally nothing. I think, I think it was like on here, it was like point one or something. These were working. And those are doing nothing. And your battery bank, it doesn't matter if it's lithium, AGM, or whatever type of battery. Your battery bank is always going to be as strong as your weakest battery. Those batteries are dead. These are still working. But they're working ten times harder because of those guys. So what I'm going to do, and I'm trying to save some money to get my lithiums. The goal was to get lithiums anyhow at some point in time. Now that technology is much different than it was 10 years ago, inverters are different than they were 10 years ago, everything is so much better than it was 10 years ago. So the game plan was to eventually upgrade these anyhow. It's just it's going to be now instead of later. But I need some money. Here's what I'm doing. I'm going to totally disconnect those and I've already done so. Those guys there I can leave and so instead of that being my main positive and this being my main negative, it's going to be this is my main negative and this is my main positive. And we're just going to use those. Because these here are still hooked up in series. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So we got 6, 12, 18, 24 volts still. And each one is 460 amps. So I still have 460 amps minus that. 50% so I have 200 amps available to me for usage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook these up and then we're going to kind of test it and see how it holds the charge see if it will hold the charge it should hold the charge better than all eight of them connected and if it does then I bought myself some time until I get my uh, my lithiums and you're going to have to stay tuned because it's going to be cool Basically, that guy gets replaced. That's a Semlex 2000. That guy gets replaced. This guy gets replaced. That guy gets replaced. A whole bunch more solar panels, a rack. Oh, man, it's going to be delicious. So you guys got to stay tuned to see all that. But dead batteries, here's what I'm doing to fix it. And uh, not lesson learned because it's something I knew. But I just kind of forgot I just like overlooked it so don't overlook your batteries oh yeah one other very important thing that I want to point out is that this I don't know how well they've cooled down but when I put this thermometer see how that reads 94 degrees that one's hundred and nine degrees now they've been charging for a few hours this morning. That one's 95. That one's 92-ish. But the good ones, look at this. 62. 63. 63-ish. 60 60-ish. Granted, these are up front. And those are in the back, so they're kind of insulated and protected better. But I find it interesting, and I know nothing about batteries. If you guys have been watching my stuff, you know I'm an expert at absolutely nothing. I find it interesting. Those have been charging really hard over the last few hours. They're still dead batteries, but they've been trying to charge like crazy. And you can tell by the temperature. These guys here were 60 degrees, and they were full of water. I had to put water in those guys. That also is maybe an indicator if you just, if you got the AGMs, just do the temperature on your batteries. And when you find batteries are different temperatures, then you might have an issue. That's my new main positive. That's my, still my main negative. And then those now are all disconnected. Now because the charge controller, this goes, wires up through here because that is a cheap charge controller here's what I have for my voltage right now I have 
261 and nothing going in just yet because I still have the panels off. Let's kick everything on and see if it explodes. Oh, by the way, I don't know if this is right or wrong or which way I'm supposed to do it, but here's what I did. I hooked up those first and then I hooked those up next and I got sparked basically when I touched that one I got sparked, that one and that one but once you kind of the initial touch then just keep it on don't like take it off and put it back on because every time it touches you'll get a spark so I had gloves on glad I did so I don't know if I'm supposed to do it that way or if maybe I should have did that first and then that one last I don't know I'm the master of nothing Let's flip the switch and see what happens, see if it explodes. Okay, no smoke, no fire, no explosion, I'm still alive. Concho's happy. See, 300 watts going in, 11 amps going in, 29 volts is what it's charging at. Now, I forgot to show what that reading was before I did this. Here's what it was. That monitor was showing like 1200 watts. And it was like 40 volts going in. It was like 37 or something, or not volts, but amps going in. That's because it was trying to charge those four batteries. Those four were bringing this whole system down. We're going to see. So you have to stay tuned. Subscribe, click that bell for notifications and all that stuff. And I'll give it a few days, maybe a week or so. Do another quick review to see how well it's holding the charge. Right now, I got promise. I'm more concerned about it holding charge than anything. Because if it holds the charge, then I know those are definitely still really good batteries. If it doesn't hold the charge, then I know that these are on their way out. And then when we put a load on it, I think what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to check the current in each one of these with the milliamps. See if at least these are, are consistent. So again, remember, I have no clue what I'm doing. So I do this. I have that set to 200A and it is reading 2.5 ish. That one's reading 2.7 ish. This one's reading 2.8 ish. Let's read this one one more time. So 2.688. Now, what's funny is, and again, I don't have no idea what this means. So when I look at this number, it's like 4.5. <laughs> now, if I try to add those up, it doesn't come up to that. So I have no idea what this stuff means. But I know this. As far as the current that runs through these, that one's, and that one, and that one, is like pretty close. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. By the way, having one of these is actually pretty cool. I really don't know how to use it, but I know how to put it on the amps and check it to see if current was running through. All right, let's hope that's a good temporary fix until I get my lithiums and, and a robust system. So, what's lesson learned? Just do more solar, more panels. Even if you think you're gonna do it later, just do it anyhow. <laughs> See you by a bunch.